Hey everyone, it's Brett for uh, this week's uh, class here for Crypto Mastery. And um, we have with us, Joe's here. So we're gonna, he's all better. He was feeling a little under the weather and glad you recovered there, Joe. If you wanna say hi to everyone. Hi everyone. I'm back and I'm bad. <laughs> in a good way. <clears throat> and in a good, good way. <laughs> the best possible way. All right. Awesome. Okay, guys. Well, I uh, just want to give you a quick wave and uh, I'll, I'll kill the camera here. We're going to go over some news. We'll look at some charts and we're going to check out some hot movers here. So with that, uh, let's kind of dive in and um yeah we're ready to go so let's see the big news right now crypto exchange binance spending us dollar transfers now as i understand this is for binance not binance us but i uh, haven't really had time to unpack this this is um here's here's what i want to read from this if this had happened a month or two ago the markets would be tanking and, and freaking out uh, the fact that it isn't uh completely dumping is bullish so there are mixed signals and we want to form a an overall thesis here on this before we kind of decide what to do but um by all means the easy money was made the last few weeks so you know we are going to watch the in, the indicators trust the indicators but uh be wary of what could be happening here so let's continue to kind of go through all this uh so Biden it says we are temporarily spending suspending so usd banks transfers as of february 8th that's tomorrow and um and if you remember, I remember distinctly last February 8th. Uh, that was a terrible day uh, for me putting the trading because it's uh, they were I was on a large short and they were pushing price up. Then they pushed it right up to my liquidation price as I had more money coming in and, and a quick, quick blip of the candle took it out and then prices went continued lower. So I don't know. February 8th is kind of an interesting day. It was sort of when. Uh, uh, that was not something I expected. So um, my my uh, guard is up this week. And, um, you know, not that the, every year things happen, but it is also interesting every July. July seems to be a pivot point in the markets. Uh, 2021 certainly was at uh, midterm bottom, 2022. And I was looking at charts the other night. July is kind of, it's interesting pivot, uh, usually bounce month. And I think we'll probably see that again this year. July, August will be the Kind of the ultimate bottom but um whether that's lower than sixteen thousand or or above it I, that's debatable but back to the topic at hand just to clarify by ncus not affected so the question is what is what's up with the suspension joe do you know i haven't really had time to unpack it very much i thought there'd be more details but it seems there's not a whole lot uh going on with that seems sort of absorbed in the prices already yeah the, well i don't know too much about it it, it was unexpected um, um but it is uh concerning um because you know you know what's you know there has to be a reasoning behind why they did that yeah yeah you know and maybe nothing else so well i won't say nothing <clears throat> but let's see let's see i don't want to get dig too deep into it again show me the chart i'll tell you the news and um it's just uh it's kind of a all right here's there's some youtube videos you guys can go and watch this i don't know that um i don't know any of these guys so i can't recommend them but um it seems to be priced in so the good news is there's not a whole lot to worry about at this time the genesis bankruptcy there's probably more contagion though and it's something we want to kind of unpack a little bit more here's some more news i want to skim through this so not go too deep because we're, we're seeing in the charts that it wasn't too bad basically is the bottom line uh, crypto mining firms hut eight hut eight's a big mining firm so this is also a sign of a bottom you guys is when we start seeing mergers we start seeing the bloodletting happening you know the uh, big events the ftx which was our lehman brother moments uh, moment those usually mark the bottom of the markets and so this uh merger is um uh, us bitcoin plan calling it the new hut so you know regulatory approval etc cetera, etc cetera. but that means they are making plans so they survive and that's the biggest thing that we need to take away from this is that it's not the end of crypto and mining as we know it 
And uh, let's see, large scale publicly traded North American Bitcoin miner. So the keywords here, publicly traded, not sure what I clicked on there, but uh, publicly traded North American Bitcoin miner. So that means it has more stability, leads more to mass adoption. And that's what I would, you know, all of this is positive for crypto. Okay, so you know, in terms of which way are we sailing, uh, we're sailing to uh, away from uh, Bitcoin going away and towards Bitcoin mass adoption. So in the overall scheme of things, this is good. They have some growing pains to work out, but as we know, we're really in 1991 in terms of adoption of crypto and and uh, and internet and sort of following that same path. Yeah. So here's that Twitter post. So I I consider that bullish. Let's see, DCG selling holdings. This is not entirely uh, bullish. Well, this could be used viewed different ways. DCG selling holdings in several grayscale trusts, Financial Times, and so that it was the big fear that uh, they would suddenly dump all of the uh, Bitcoin that they have and uh, Bitcoin um, and Barry Silbert rather. Bitcoin Barry here, if uh, he had said that you'll you'll have to pry my Bitcoin from my dead cold hands. So that seems he's not going to go ahead and dump all of it, but it seems they are starting to sell some of it. And isn't it interesting that this announcement comes at Bitcoin resistance levels, which we've been watching anyway. So, you know, once again, you know, show me the news, I'll tell you the price as uh, or show me the charts, I'll tell you the news. So we have resistance here just to jump around. This is the weekly index of Bitcoin. So this is going to be strong and uh, strong resistance. This is the uh, death cross on the weekly. So the 50 week coming down through the 200 week. Uh, we are going to pull back here and what happens next, who knows? I would imagine something like this. Uh, the bigger question is, do we dip deeper? And we do have these already on the charts that we'll unpack more on tomorrow's class. So I already have these accumulation zones in play and how already have these kind of uh, potentials uh, drawn out. So with that, um, let's just keep going on this. Let's see, this DCG started selling holding several investment vehicles run by subsidiary digital assets manager, Grayscale Steep Discount. So that's a little concerning. And the question is, how much are they going to sell? And uh, this is public because, you know, U.S. Securities filings, they have to disclose that. So basically, they Grayscale operates GBTC, who's 10 billion plus in assets. You know, if um, here, here's the concern here is that as prices go lower, this could snowball because they would then have to sell more of their holdings, which would, would perpetuate more liquidations and more stop losses and more contagion and companies going down. Now, who would that benefit? The bigger players certainly that want to accumulate, that would benefit them. And that's why, you know, I do think we see one, one or two more pulls back down lower. And uh, I'm going to make the case for a deeper dive tomorrow in tomorrow's class and I was watching uh, Ben Cowan's channel yesterday. He's he's pretty smart and he's outlined the similarities between the internet bubble. And uh, so you don't need to go watch the 40 minute video. We'll unpack that tomorrow. But there definitely are some close similarities to that. So this push higher, whether it was a sucker's rally and uh, spun by a short squeeze, I think a little bit of both. And uh, we need to be careful here that things do roll over again. We're at resistance. So all of these things lean toward a size of well, a a uh, noticeable pullback and correction and consolidation. Whether we see another big scary drop remains to be seen. But here's the thing: you guys know I've been saying that I, we haven't seen, in terms of our indicators, we haven't seen the telltale sign of a bottom, a big deep green arrow on the ERI. We've seen a couple little ones down in here, and we saw the TSI push up. But what I want to see is one more capitulation event. And if for, for me to, it's not that I want that to happen, but for me to really solidly call a bottom in here, I think that's uh, really what I want to see on this is that um, we uh, calm down, see this another test. It doesn't have to be low or low. I'll take us back here to the mid middle of June, 2021. And then July, 2021, we had this arrow. We did not have a TSI confirm or signal. So it came back down. And we saw that deeper retest, but it didn't go lower. It just came down sort of to retest it. So this is really what I want to see is a nice uh, inverted hammer and uh, bearish engulfing candle at the bottom on the weekly with this green ERI right here with another TSI. So that's what I really want to see. So again, it could come down into this range here back to the 16,000 level, maybe a little higher. And uh, if it came down and ideally our ideal scenario right? And to come down and retest the midpoint of this vector candle here, because that would be 
Let's see, where would that be? Let me draw a line. I'd say that right about 19,200. That would be the ideal scenario co coinciding with a, another ERI and TSI swing. So that really is what we want to see. So I'm going to say if uh, I'm going to put an alert on that, breaking down below this, uh, that would be a potential buy area for me. And if our symbols, uh, signals align, okay. And so, but we want to watch that area. And actually, uh, I drew that maybe a little too high there. I'd say midpoint there. I'm going to drag that down a bit. So 18,900. And um, so just vis visualizing that, but look at that, that would be a meaningful level of support also, you know, and as support, this was strong support here. And as it broke down and pushed right back above it, we do want to see that kind of a pattern. We want to see that come down and test that. So that's what we'll more of tomorrow's class. But uh, again, that's a scenario and hypothesis that uh, we're working with here. All right. So. Uh, jumping back to the news here, let's just keep an eye on that. And so let's say GBTC were to dump more of this and that sort of coincided with that pullback, that would be an excellent buying opportunity right back into this zone. And you can see I have it there on the accumulation zone. So sometimes these things are clear in terms of what we think it's going to do. And then the news comes out and says, well, here's why this is happening. Um, just accept it, you guys. This is um, whatever the causes and effects are. And um, sometimes, if you go into quantum physics, things like that, they are the same. Uh, anyway, it is what it is. You can um, use your own judgment and follow along with that. But that is how these things tend to play out. And so, uh, let's see. Merger still subject subject to credit. Uh, sorry, court regulatory approval by the authorities, HUT-8, so we're still on HUT-8. All right, we've unpacked that already. Uh, we're on the GBTC story. Any uh, questions? No questions, all right. Let's see, uh, Jan and also Genesis, um, holding company, uh, Genesis Global. And uh, Genesis, so DG DCG is tied to Genesis as well, uh, which is filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. I guess the other big shoe that could drop here and I have my Google alert set for Gemini News. Uh, and so they are quietly not saying a whole lot. And, and so what I am going to do is see if there's any rumblings on uh, over at Gemini, because Gemini failing would be a major deal. And uh, I don't believe that's necessarily happening. But if we do see another dump, these bigger companies that are holding on for uh, by dear life or are going to have some problems there. And, and Gemini is certainly one of them because they've got 900 million uh, at, uh, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, the, uh, all right, just type that coin, uh, crypto panic is what I want to do here. And let's see, just give me one second. Um, all right, so... Gemini, let's see if there's any news on Gemini real quick. Just agreement principle, Genesis Global. Okay, so this is uh, good news. And this was 19 hours ago. We'll look at that really quick. So we want to we want to know what's up with uh, Gemini, if anything's coming our way. Uh, let's see. Okay, Gemini will be contributing up to 100 million. So it sounds like they have money left. Earn users is part of the plan, further demonstrating... Okay, we'll look at that quickly too. Don't want to spend too long on the news, but that's kind of what I'm watching for. And um, yeah, all right, let's get to that next. All right, so let's see, where were we? Uh, this was that uh, Binance news, we covered that. Gemini Genesis is what we wanted to make sure we didn't miss anything. So, excuse me, one second here. Anyway, um, where is my controls? This thing is a little temperamental here. Anyway. Okay, so I think we've covered that. DCG creditor pact revealed with plan to sell Genesis trading unit part of bankruptcy. Okay, so they have a plan is the point here. Binance, uh, we covered some bad, uh, bad news for Binance. World first cryptocurrency no longer accepts dollar. The... It doesn't seem to be a big deal, but we have to be aware of that. So he, here's where this kind of all plays together. Yeah. I'm sorry, did someone have a comment? Somebody's unmuted there. Uh, maybe that's Joe, okay. So basically, let's see what happens. If anything, here, here's where I'm going with all this. The news is telling us the reasons why we could still get our dump back to fill the 
the CME gap that we've been discussing. And on the Wednesday class, we've been talking about that more, but there's a, I had a screenshot on here. There's an open CME gap uh, that uh, we still need to fill and we'll get to it. I'd have to jump to the right chart, you guys. Sorry about that. That was it. Here we go. Right. So that would put us around that 20,000 level. So we already know this. This is a likely magnet spot right down around 19,800. And that's what we're, we're now have the reasons that could take us down there. So we're not surprised. And, um, you know, if we do get another pump up higher, then uh, we'll, you know, know to uh, take profits into that. That's the thesis that I'm going with. Everyone, everyone understand? Okay. So, um, all right, let's see. So Twitter, uh, contributing Gemini contributed 800 million to earn users part of the plan. And let's see, reach an agreement principle with Genesis Global Trading Capital. Other creditors on a plan provide a path for earn users to recover their assets. So, so they have a plan, and that's good news. And so, there we go. So, that's all I uh, wanted to cover today. And, um, Joe, if you had anything else you wanted to touch on. We can do that, or I have a comment here. Go ahead, Joe. Well, well I just I just basically what I wanted to say was that uh, Fed Chairman uh, Powell, he's going to be speaking, and uh, the markets are waiting for that. So it'd be interesting to see in here how we close uh, the day on the daily chart um, in regards to these comments that are coming out. You know, which, you know, it could have a positive or negative effect on, you know, eminent on the positions. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's a good point. I'm, and so the Dow slips as investors brace for remarks. And let's see. So we want to keep that in mind on the jobs report. So what time does he speak here? It's never really clear. Anybody know? Yeah, well, he, this hour he's going to be speaking. So I okay. believe it's on the hour, one o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's look at some charts here and see what could happen and what to prepare for and then uh, what the signals are telling us. And um, often they, they have telltale signs, uh, signs of what's to come. Uh, Sam says, I got an email from Gemini that they made some deal with uh, Genesis. Uh, I assume that's what you mean, genius, but uh, to get earned crypto holders back. So we just covered that, Sam. But yeah, thanks for that. And that's inwardly bullish. You know, on the shorter time frames, not a whole lot going on. I think we do head uh, lower here, but uh, we'll get to that. And yeah, so why don't we jump over into some things? I can just take a quick look at that uh, monthly chart, which to me still looks bullish. Uh, we unpack this in more detail on Wednesday's class, but uh, at the high level, you know, and Joe, I shared a screenshot of this with you. How beautiful is that, everyone? On a multi year time frame, the ERI has called the bottom of every bear market on this monthly time frame. There's no noise on these longer time frames. Here, 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 here. So I think we have hit a bottom in that we do have a pullback, but we push higher. And uh, this is just look at this TSI confirming. You know, we could CBC something like this, which we we do detail, cover more detail tomorrow. If, by the way, if you're in the crypto mastery and are not in M3 Active Trader, just uh, message us. We can tell you how to uh, join that and get access to that class because we dive deeper. And uh, tomorrow we're going to be looking at my top 25 AI coins. And that's going to be exciting. Many of you are already in the M3. But, uh, but just in general, I mean, so glad I pulled this up here because... Uh, even if so over here in 2015, TSI started pushing higher and then we had a month where it peeled back a little bit. But even back in 2015, you guys, it was June and July where we bottomed and we're pushing back up again. So that's that's powerful. You know, we did pull up a month down, but still green on the TSI. Price came down a little farther. So we saw this kind of a dip and then this was the ultimate low. But um, it was it didn't go lower than it was in uh, January of 2015. So it had a, like it doesn't look like much here, but it pushed up 50 percent. That had a 40 percent pullback, and then but it still 
that was the bottom. So very interesting. So that that's that's a strong clue for us, you guys. And uh, that these indicators are uh, how powerful they are, simple and powerful. So we're watching that carefully and um, love it. So that's the monthly. Um, join us again tomorrow for more uh, kind of diving into that. The uh, monthly here. Why do I have two of them? Uh, that's a all studies. Yeah, right. Exactly. So this is our more in-depth chart for tomorrow on the weekly. Again, I think we do pull back down here for that 200, that rising 200 week moving average somewhere in this range. It'll hold very important too, because uh, this held previously all the way back, going all the way back and all the way back. It's a very important line here. Actually, it held at the bottom of the COVID crash, right? So that should be support here on a different chart we can see the other one the 200 month moving average here that purple line oops so um you know what we can do before we dive into all this is also pull up some of the movers in the uh the screener there just wanted to get an overall view of what things look like and there's our watch list, some of our watch list here. So not a lot. I'm just on my master list. Again, nothing really happening. Be waiting for Powell. But you know what is significant? I will say we're still over a trillion dollars. That's meaningful. And um, you know this trend line here, though, is coming down a bit, depending on how we draw it. On the bodies of the candles, we're back above it. But this trillion really need to get up around 1.8, 1 1.10 trillion for this thing to to uh for me to believe that this that was that was the worst of it even if it pulls back you guys though here back to this 50-day ema and then pushes higher that's the strongest signal we're going to see all right so uh just keep that in mind all right so uh we're on a daily chart I've got my uh the signals down below uh my meaning on my chart clearly uh these are uh, joe's uh brainchild here and uh I helped with the ERI a little bit there. All right, let's zoom out on this. So let's do this. Let's come over to the uh, crypto pair screener, see what's going on. And I'm going to um, play around these filters a little bit so we um, can filter out some of the uh, the non the, the non usable information or the one that we don't need. Okay, so the exchange uh, we're going to look at. And the high and the low, I don't need the price. I guess we can have in there, but we don't need a lot of this, right? So 24 hour change in volume, volume, not concerned with volume. We did look at it last time. That was an interesting uh, barometer, but I really wanna look at the, the percent change and the change on this. And as far as the exchanges, we don't need all of these lots of noise. So what I usually do is turn off any and I'll do Binance US. I guess we can do Binance also. And uh, Coinbase, maybe uh, KuCoin. Because, uh, you know, there's seen some interesting opportunities on KuCoin. A lot of those um, AI coins are there. We'll look at tomorrow. And so, um, you know, this uh, is not all inclusive. But again, I want to try to catch most of these. So, all right, let's sort by a percentage change. We'll kind of see what's going on here. Um, what is this thing here? Uh, this is an index. I'm not STG, not concerned with that. Yeah. So we want to kind of rule some of these out. And um, hmm. why are those showing up there? On the, which, what exchanges are on, are on these? I want to just do crypto. It looks like it's on sort of the indices as well. So maybe I missed something there, Joe, if you know what I need to turn off. Financials, USD, top gainers. I haven't seen that before. So that may be on Binance. Let me check off Binance, see what we see here. If it just, all right, that got rid of it. All right, let's do that. Uh, high Bay, um, let's see, how is this? 178% in a day. That's on KuCoin, no surprise there, but look at that. I mean, great looking chart. Uh, I wouldn't go chase this, but interesting. Mm, again, KuCoin, they have all the margin traders on there big Asian uh, influence. And um, um, and I don't mean that sound wrong. It's just, um, 
you know, a lot of the mentality is much more of a uh, let's gamble on this one and and do a little bit more margin. So just understand that you'll see these big pumps, huge bullish engulfing candle. What you'd want to do here is put on a Bollinger Band and just see. So this is not a buy here. If you could see it, if it pulls back inside the Bollinger Band, maybe worth um, uh, doing something there. But uh, I typically don't do that because these indicators work much better on solid projects that um, have more of a history and have more volume, barely any volume on this thing. So that's highly been highly manipulated. Uh, what I mean by that is the day traders, someone in the day trading room somewhere said, hey, you look at High Bay, they all pile on it. And that happened all over in day trading rooms around the world. So having been in one, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong. I know you've been there too. You know, someone in the room yells out, something so-and-so is running and then everyone just goes and uh they hammer it to try to get squeeze out their couple pips or whatever they're trying to get and uh and off she goes and then it falls back to earth but thank god we have that bollinger band because this will pull back never want to chase these once they get extended like that you guys uh never say never but unless you really know what you're doing stay away from these but interesting, long-term green on the uh, the radar. Look at that, all green on the radar. Uh, Cambria, not familiar. Again, these are Kucoin. You know, here, here's what I might suggest for you guys. That um, and, and this is not financial advice, but if you had a few thousand dollars, maybe up to five percent of your portfolio, whatever that looks like, in Kucoin for margin training trading. Some of these are fun to play. You know, you go in um, now, just be careful with margin, because especially if you're using uh, you want to be using isolated most often versus the other one, which basically your whole account is subject to it with isolated. It's the individual trade. So with Bybit, that's the default uh, cross margins where you're you know, you might have a couple other positions that if this one went against you, you'd basically lose all of them. Make sure you know what you're doing. But if you were in one of these and this thing was really running on a short term time frame and or if you caught it earlier, you know, this had we been watching it, this was a great looking little candle here. Not doesn't qualify as a rocket, but a nice little candle that sure enough had some follow through. This thing's all green. If it pulled back at the end of the day, putting you know five hundred a thousand dollars on margin on something like this sometimes you can you can do well on them but um more than often they come back in especially don't want to be entering here outside those bollinger bands so let's see no questions there all right let's see what is this kat cambria what i was saying though is you could start a uh uh, same one down here, uh, a watch list for KuCoin. At one point I had that. And so as the markets come back and, you know, we start seeing these pumps, here's one I had. This is an old listing of KuCoin listed coins. And just clicking on that, I can roll through here. I can even click on percentage change and, and see some of these very similar charts here. But these are pumps that um, may or may not last. What I would say is, is when in doubt, zoom out but it's been a long time since we were in bull market mode. When uh, when they really pump though, they can push up high like that and ride that upper Bollinger Band. And I wonder if we can see any clues in our indicators on this, but uh, it's a lot of noise. Uh, so be, just be careful with these, you guys, but having these lists, this is how you can start building your list. These are your, you know, base hit double base hit just make sure you take profits if you nail one of these but uh here we uh if you have time you know make a list of kucoin coins here you just go through them see what you like i mean if it's something like this here's an example um i don't know which one this is show me the chart though uh you have the 21 above the 50 have come down and held the 50 day moving average if this thing closes toward the top of the day then we have that rocket indicator all right, and um, turn that off for a minute. Let's see. Okay, so here we found one, you guys. I mean, um, I don't know what SparkPoint does. Uh, we have a bullish ERI. Okay, right there. TSI going green and above the 20 line is already above the 20 line to confirm. So the way to play something like this would be allocate some of your trade here, wait for the signal line to go have these out of order, the signal line to go green and ideally a key and a bell. 
and uh, then potentially leg back into that trade, you know, dollar cost average. So what do we have here? This is SRK. I'm going to write it down and I'm also going to add it over here to this list. I haven't been adding to this KuCoin list since 2021, to be honest, I haven't even looked at it and does not appear to be uh, in alphabetical order. So now I know we have one. Where is this KuCoin list? Guys, what am I missing here? Where's KuCoin list? Uh, it should be under K, Crown, LK, they're not in order apparently, and it's probably right in front of me, but uh, it is escaping me. So it doesn't appear to be listed. Oh, it's all the way up top. I'm sorry. Uh, and, and so it's already on the list. That's why. That's why it's already on the list. So we'll put it at the top. Okay. Well, there you go. SRK, one to watch. And uh, again, uh, we're just using the uh, the crypto movers. Here's one. Let, let's go through the list that I have here just to skim through it. All green on the radar. Uh, Electronium. Um, no idea what they do, but look at this. Right on that 21 day, getting a, uh, let's see, do we have an ERI? We don't have the ERI. We have a TSI turning higher on that. So, you know, ETN, maybe one to watch. So there you go. You guys uh, following here? This one looks a little top heavy. Z, our indicators overbought on the TSI. Wouldn't uh, pay much attention to that one. So we can just skim through these really fast. That looks overbought. I mean, I really like to see these at the 21 or 50 day moving average. Did have a recent bell signal, but is overbought here on the TSI and the oscillator. So I'd say, man, not so much on this one uh, rndr is that rate render yeah render for things about but look at this overbought now what a great trade though over it's been riding the overbought zone but it would be caught it early eri tsi signal and bell the four kings you guys when you're out spending time looking through your coins and i encourage you to do this have your own baskets you guys probably have time and more i won't say more time than us but, uh, you know, start making your hot lists. And when you start seeing these patterns, Joe, man, if, if we could find an indicator that would ding, 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 or alert us when anything out there, a scanner has ERI, TSI, signal, and bell in, within a four-day period. Because these, when these line up, it's, I, I don't want to put a percentage on it. It's 90, 95% plus empirically. Not scientifically, but that's what I've seen. And um, love it. So I'll have to put our uh, thinking caps on on that. Uh, feel free to jump in at any point, Joe. I was just trying to get through the uh, all of this here. Uh, well, so. well, I, I just, um, yeah. well, well, just two things I wanted to say, right? Mm -hmm. um, first is, is that you're correct because um, these tools in here are uh, designed to uh, show different market cycles. So different algorithms are moving at different speeds. And the purpose of having uh, all five is, is that there is those case point scenarios where you have more odds in your favor to be successful with more cycles saying yes. And uh, that's kind of how the, the radar works when you're seeing the multiple time frames there that's letting you know that the cycles are confirming on the other time frames, the other charts. And what's significant about this is, is that the technology is doing what we cannot. I mean, we're human. It's, it's almost impossible for us to watch four charts at the same time and to be able to tell which direction or make a decision on what to do. But here we see technology at its best and showing what color so that the trader um, knows uh, where his risk uh, levels are uh, according to how the, the cycle momentum is confirming. And, you know, the other thing I wanted to say was um, I was just looking on Bloomberg and uh, they're giving uh, two minutes now before uh, Powell speaks. So we, you might see in here in the next two minutes, things maybe get a little crazy. Thank you, Joe. Um, and please chime in anytime. I'm uh, trying to get through the kind of the mechanics of it, but uh, your nuances are always uh, bet on and appreciated. So um, 
Good to know. Thanks for that. I took a screenshot of this because this is really textbook of what you're looking for. And those of you that have been sitting here with me for six, seven months saying, well, we're going to, it'll turn around some, one of these days, it's going to, good times will come again, et cetera, et cetera. This is starting to look really good. And we don't, you know, you snooze, you lose. And myself included, I wish that, um, you know, well, let's not wish, let's not, there's a great quote. I, I want to, maybe I'll get it wrong. It says, let us look, not look forward in fear, or let us not look backward in anger or forward in fear, but around us in awareness. I think it was Val Vandewall. And so all the past trades, you know, we can look back and say, I wish this, I wish that, but uh, certainly uh, this is, these are clues to learn from. But my point here is start paying close attention to these opportunities and to start trusting when these line up, because back here, January 2nd, we really didn't know what was going on. You know, we weren't, we were kind of rallying a bit looking good it's a little bit but nobody was really watching and you wouldn't have known let's face it we would have we would have no idea to come in and buy this other than the eri tsi goes green signal lines also also green interesting signal went green first i haven't seen that very often um, but that shows you as, as these are different these are based on different uh formulas and indicators that joe's created so and each one themselves are a combination of multiple things. And uh, only the Wizard of Oz knows what those are. And the uh, wizard is Joe. So, but look at that. I mean, E-R-I-T-S-I, signal and bell. Say that a hundred times until you get it. Because <laughs> our, our job of selling this is never over. Because you guys are sit there and, and I don't mean this in a negative way. It's, it's normal. Anything new sit and watch but i want you to really pay attention and build let it build your confidence and conviction and clarity uh, because that'll give you the courage to pull the trigger this is 395 percent a 400 percent. it went higher that was a 400 percent possible win if you had been watching render and most of us weren't but the, these are those opportunities that are out there and if you have that you know if you're one of those and you make time at the end of the day because I've been doing that like, even 25 years ago when I was learning this back when we were using Telescan and had an old compact laptop with a, a ball, had a mouse ball in the laptop. I mean, old, old school. But I would go through these charts, just go through charts and charts and charts for hours, uh, you know, at least an hour into the day looking for the ideal setups. And, um, you know, when you start to really internalize this and see these, then then you're like emotions taken out of it. You're like, boom, this is a, this is a trade. I'm going to take this one. So, you know, even back here we had, and this started to confirm as you would go along. Render is a great example, bullish engulfing candle. Now, just, to, just because this class is primarily mechanics of the indicators, how to use them. Now, here's, I'm just going to answer a question you guys haven't asked. Uh, I see some questions come in, but I'll, I'll get to those. So you might say, well, here there was a bearish ERI, so wouldn't you have sold then? And that's why we use these in conjunction because this kind of, this was a bearish engulfing candle, right? Let me just zoom in on that. So we're not cherry picking because back here, it would have looked like this and it would have been like this. You might be like, oh, well, should I sell now? It's bearish engulfing, bearish ERI. And that's two strikes against us. So that's when you then you go and look at everything else. And I'd say, well, the TSI is going higher and it's green. The signal line is going higher and it's green. And we're still in a four count on the trend indicator. So to me, that is, let's see what happens. Now you could always sell half and hold, but then the very next candle, what do we have? A big bullish engulfing candle. And then you would have been sad that you sold out. So point is, learn to trust these the more signals that align the more you should have confidence in following those okay and then then we got into a new bell a new buy here and boom look what happened the eri and we'll, sorry the trend strength indicator just to show you this can stay up these higher levels for some time and when we zoom out we've seen that it dipped down a little bit a little bit of a fake out there let's just unpack this a bit so we had a bearish eri here and then a red signal would you have sold 
would we have sold? Hmm, that's a tricky one. Probably we would have sold there, broke down below the 80 line. But in terms of those things, though, uh, you know, that's usually if, if you have conviction in it, you know, probably here on this candle, uh, that's tricky. It was bullish. Uh, it was a green candle. We had the bearish ERI. You might have sold all, but you can always get back into these, right? It, or sell half is usually what I recommend. But either that, either way, I mean, that was a nice little push up on it. You know, we can't cherry pick these. That's why I'll, I'll just we'll go back. But look at that. If you had just stayed in and uh, probably what I would have done is gone to the weekly on that and seen that this was not one. Yeah. See, that's the thing. The third thing to do is go to the weekly, you guys, because uh, we discovered this. Um, how do I want to say this? Uh, I was confused. It was end of 2021 and we had. Uh, the market's pulling in in November, December, and we had Adam Cosmos push higher, a number of keep going higher for more profits. And uh, I was watching the dailies and Joe is like, pull up the weekly. And it's so true. The, the weekly it shows us the footsteps of the elephants. <clears throat> it shows their intention. And when the weekly ERI TSI go green, right? And then we have the weekly bell on all of these are in confluence that's when you have conviction it should have conviction this is going to power on higher and sure enough it did weekly 21 day shot up above the 50 and it's it is also at this point everyone uh spend the time to really learn this now because we are coming off a bottom of a market cycle and if you're like, oh, sounds good. Um, I'll catch it later. I have to go meet so-and-so for coffee and Starbucks. And, 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 and so just don't, well, I don't want this to come off wrong, but don't come in back in in two months and three months and four months and when the markets have already got up here and say, all right, Brett, where are some juicy trades for me? I want to, I want them. I want to pay for my subscription. They're right now. And you really, we want to really pay attention to these times in the market when we're oversold. We're coming up uh, above the 21 and 50 again. These are our most probable success trades when we have support below us and we're just coming through it. Now, if when we pull back, as I think we will, and we start pulling back to these to retest them, that'll be the ideal time to get uh, to get in the coins that we're watching when these line up. Does that make sense? All right, ignore it, your peril. All right, enough uh, of that. Just some tough love, you guys. Let's see. Um, I was trying to looking to automate that in three commas, uh, Brandon says, and I assume you mean uh, the having all four indicators uh, together. I don't know how you would do that in three commas. That'd be tough. Um, but if you figure it out, certainly let me know. Uh, Jim says, could you talk some more about the radar indicator and what it really leads to? Sure. Yeah. And I'll, um, Joe, Joe touched on that. Um, so maybe that's what he was answering and I'm just seeing this, but I will comment on it. How strong a signal is it relative to others? Okay. Well, let's, let's look at the radar and, uh, let's see back to, we're still on render. So this is a good example. So basically, uh, let me go back to the nice thing about the radar is see how it doesn't change. I can jump from a daily chart to a weekly chart and without having to change the time frames, the radar already tells me daily, weekly, monthly are green. And what this is pulling off of, it's not any of the other indicators. It is a uh, it's pulling off the um, stochastics RSI, but uh, a special one that Joe coded. Um, Joe, do you want maybe just maybe talk about that for a minute so people aren't confused and I think that might be helpful. Yeah, sure. Um, the way this works is is that, that radar is doing uh, is technology working in a way where it's showing us the direction and showing us the strength of the market, and you're able to uh, change and adjust that to have different time frames. I use it on the higher time frames, like you see here. And I use this to organize my portfolio because it helps me set the right expectation for the trade week. Um, a lot of times when you're looking at a daily chart, that's representing uh, a bar that's being done every day. A weekly is being done every week. So, you know, it's good in here to have the overall perspective 
when you're coming into the trade week, it's kind of like getting the trade book on the teams that are playing. And then now you can put your interest in exactly in here um, with your hypothesis of what direction you think the market is going. And, and then that's when the other tools come into place because now you use the radar and you get this hypothesis and you say, hey, I, I see in here green and I like green. Now this is when you can look for the other additional confirmations from the chart overlays, such as the signal line and the TSI and the ERI. And, um, and in different case points, you know, you'll have um, a signal. And, and what I do is I set my alerts, right? Because like, it's almost impossible to remember all this in your head. The, the, the TSI, you can set the alert there. The uh, trend indicator, you can set your alert there. And as well as the ERI. And when these, uh, when, the, when the market cycle starts to turn and you start to see the radar turn green, then you'll see these other chart overlays um, trigger. And when they trigger, uh, the alert uh, populates, it'll, it'll go to your phone, uh, it'll, uh, it'll pop up on the screen, you have an alert, and now's the time to take action. So, you know, when I'm utilizing things, I'm scaling into to the different positions. I'm never coming in all at once and saying, hey, uh, you know, put everything I got on black. That, that's not the way I trade. Um, that's not the way these tools were, were designed. These tools were designed in here to scale into the position with additional confirmations so that, you know, you're, you're getting that confirmation and you're also um, doing it in a mathematical way, uh, whereas you have the best odds in your favor to be successful. Uh, you know, rather than um, someone coming in here and not having these tools, they're not going to have the timing on when to execute the trades. And in this business, it's all, it's all about timing. And, and that's where the value of the tools are, is once you master the tools, now you mastered your own destiny. And now you'll know the right timing to take action. So. Um, that's how that works. Yeah, thank you for that uh, good explanation. So, so that um, uh, just so to follow along with that, and you can also not sure if you know this, but you can edit the time frames on these. And so, going under settings on the radar, there are times on the if I'm have it on a longer chart, I'll change the time frames from instead of four hours, you could do start it at a daily and go all the way up to a quarterly. So if I have it on, I believe it, I have it on my, this chart here. Uh, okay, let's, let's change it together because this is interesting. This on a four hour, if you're looking at a monthly chart, four hours is not really relevant. So I'll come up and change that to a daily. Time frame two is to a weekly. Time frame three would be a monthly. And then we could even go as much as three months or a quarterly. Okay, so that tells us that Bitcoin on the three month on the quarterly is bearish and uh, monthly still bullish. So very, can, you know, not a clear signal here on that. But so that's that's basically the options that you have on how to change this. So what I would use it for and, and even looking at this screen, though, is that this tells me without having to go to a four hour chart on the four hour, it looks like it's pulling in still bullish on a daily, weekly, monthly. So that's interesting. Again, we'll see what happens when Powell speaks, but uh, I would expect this to pull back anyway to come back to support on the Excuse weekly. Me, so, uh, Brett, yeah, I just want to let you know that he's speaking right now. Okay, do we want to I watch that? that earlier? So, I mean, um, usually we'll watch that live in uh, the other class, but we could um, if you want to do you want to fill us in as we go? Well, I mean, the Dow is up 150 points right now. And things are kind of going nuts. I, I'm not so sure it's going to hold. It doesn't look like he said much. He's only been talking for four minutes, but the market started wow. to move. <laughs> yeah, they, they like what he said. Look at Bitcoin's taking off. Nice little short squeeze there. Okay, well, this is my barometer here on the 15-minute chart. You know, this uh, 200 period 
moving average tends to be a magnet. This is an SMMA. And so we could pull up our indicators as well, but this thing's been trading lower kind of right around that 200. And, you know, when it gets too far away from it, it tends to pull back, but it was below it. Now it's shot up above. Now it's not so sure. So, uh, you know, these, these whipsaws are dangerous. So you want to be careful, but I'm um, looking at the 15 minute signal and TSI looks bullish. 15 minutes doesn't mean a whole lot, but uh, if you're day trading, uh, which is dangerous in many cases, but um, you know, even on the shorter time frames, though, you know, these guys, you guys, these, the the ERI and the uh, TSI and the stochastics oscillator here are uh, very good on uh, these shorter time frames. So you know, we would have had if you're a day trader on the three minute, we don't really go into this usually, but on the three minute, these these oscillations are are uh, are great because here triple quadruple red went and dipped down and then it turned back to green right here saw that big pump up problem is there's a fair amount of face fake outs on these so you know uh but uh anyway not to get into the detail and the weeds on day trading but saw a little pump there and let's see u.s stocks trade lower ahead of comments from powell uh, you know, this class isn't really getting in. This is more for the beginners. So I don't want to get into too much on what Powell's doing, but that's a bullish candle we just looked at. Uh, the overall, overall markets here, you know, we're on a low volume coin render, just doing some examples. But let's continue uh, with our, our um, process here. So if you guys are wanting to see what's happening out there, we've got a couple other ones. We've got, let's see, Care up 100%. Hasn't been around very long. That's a weekly. So I don't know. You know, there are opportunities on these. I'm not going to lie. Like this, if this candle winds up toward the top of its candle here, that uh, that would be a huge rocket on and breaking out of a downtrend channel. I don't know what they do. These are dangerous, but uh, there are some big wins here. I'd wait to see it pull back below its Bollinger Band. But if it closes near the high, you know, these are, there are opportunities here for sure. So I'm going to add that to our list. I might even move that up to the top here. And, um, you know, I might even look at what they do, but a lot of times just looking at uh, SR key, ATN, I'm going to leave those here and turn them green. These are KuCoin. Uh, so sometimes I'll coordinate these uh, based on what exchange they are. So my, my AI token list, We'll be going over tomorrow is color coded by what exchanges they're on. So let me just take a quick scan through here. We've got DNT, you know, that uh, is not yet on the list. So it's good habit to, to be on these if you're new. Probably want to stick with the more established projects, though. You know, there still will be opportunities there if you're a little more experienced. You know, DNT, this thing's pumping. I'm not suggesting getting in it, but just watching these things when they start breaking out of a base, a basing pattern like this can be uh, can be really interesting. So we saw that with Haven Coin as it came out of this nice rounded base and the saw nice push higher. So anyway, um, let's see. Coming up on the hour. So uh, that's a quick look at uh, what we would normally kind of skim through. Let's see, we've got AGLD, Adventure Gold, interesting, you know, pump, pumping off these uh, EMAs. So there's more in here you guys could go and look at. This is kind of one of the ways to familiarize yourself with the markets. But see, there's these fresh turns on the EMAs crossing over. Uh, collect, I don't know what they do, but let's look at it on a weekly. Probably some resistance there on the weekly, but look at that beautiful key. And uh, no, Sorry, ERI on the weekly right down below there. And um, let me put this away. So we had a bell. So you guys, I'd be watching these KuCoin coins. You know, had we been, we might have said, look at this, collect. We have ERI, TSI, signal, and bell. Again, that's your mantra because this thing is up, went up 163%. You have all the tools. You just have to put in the time with these. And I don't mean to sound like I'm preaching here. I just, um, it, it's just, I know a lot of you, you know, have these, and maybe don't trust them yet. And now is the time to develop that trust. And certainly you stop losses, but these, these crossovers, they don't off, they don't happen often. 
and um you know you don't want to be coming in when there's when they're overbought necessarily like collect actually is not a this is showing us the take profit symbol the bag of money the bag of money this is a great place to take profits reevaluate wait for a new key and a new bell you might miss some but i found overwhelmingly look at that you know this was giving the take your money and a lot of people did now you would have not have as much profit any questions on that so let's see i know we do have some more questions here um also jim said uh it seems to jump back and forth on individual time frames I'm not sure what you mean. You know, I, well, I've seen that once or twice. Same settings, different chart. I don't know. There's some variation, but for the most part, it stays the same. Like we can look at it, uh, and we did look at it on multiple chart timeframes, and the, the radar was showing the same thing. So here on Adam, uh, green, green on either end, I can jump to a weekly green, green, red in the middle. So same, same there. Should be, uh, should be uniform. Uh, if it's different, you may be on a... A low volume coin, not sure, but let's see. Uh, GRT is a sleeper. KS says had a good size run over the last few days. Yeah, GRT is on my AI list. We'll be looking at that tomorrow. The graph. I mean, that thing, that thing though, I it, it, careful with these. It's uh, the thing with the graph, and I'll just say this in a pump mania bull market, they can really run. But just understand, these are way early, don't have revenue models, because when things started coming down, the graph, like everything else, got killed, and uh, I lost money on that in the end, last uh, cycle. So you want to catch these things early and not chase them. Uh, LPT, sure, uh, that's on my list. So make sure to sign, uh, join us tomorrow. I'll share that list with you guys in uh, Active Trader. The oversold, Andreas says the oversold range uh, on the volatility index. Uh, is that a question, Andreas? So we can pull up the vol index for sure. All uh, right. Let's see. Many of the newer projects are launching on KuCoin because their listing fees are much lower than Coinbase or Binance. Yeah, that's and that's so. Um, yeah. So KS, mo many programs launch on KuCoin. It's easier for them to get the more risk tolerant investors there, and especially if they're offering margin with that. And uh, so you'll often find them there. I, I will say that Coinbase has been listing a lot because primarily they're a, a public company and, um, you know, they need uh, to, to answer to the investors. And that means more revenue. And that means more offerings. But um, anyway, look at uh, Bitcoin. You seem to like the news there. So this is Bitcoin Daily. Nice bullish engulfing candle. The um, I know I know at least one group that is heavily shorting these markets. And I wonder what's going to happen there. Could see a little short squeezing coming. So at any rate, uh, not much happening there. Otherwise, as far as why the remarks, I, my point is you don't really need to know what was said. We'll see how the day closes, but so far it looks, looks pretty strong. All right. Uh, where were we answering questions? So I think that was all of them. Anything else you guys, otherwise we can wrap up, but, uh, well, the vol index. Okay. So let's add that in and let me get to a chart where we have, I had all four on it already. Okay. So vol index. I have on my favorites here, which will alphabetize these. I thought it did. Okay. Uh, vol index on, uh, let me get to Bitcoin. So the vol index is in overbought territory on the daily, which uh, it can stay there for a long time. The vol index is great at these lower levels, though, coming up out of it. And um, that only happens so often. What am I looking for? On the weekly, I think that's just, yeah, exactly. The, it, we're seeing that on the weekly here, which is another bullish signal. It uh, it kind of flights. Well, let's look at this. This is important. I need to go back farther. 
on the uh, the data. So let me go to the Brave New Coin Index because Bitcoin Coinbase uh, X contract perpetuals. I just need more data on it. And uh, hang on. Right. Okay. Weekly vol index broke up here, coincided with big push higher. That was kind of the, the end of the bear market. You know, we had the 2017 pump up to the top here. We had a kind of pullback, the slow bleed. Everyone thought everything was over. And then boom, we dropped another 50% to the, uh, this was also the 200 day moving average and on the weekly and then it kind of came up here and it was started breaking up higher but that was the confirmation if we're watching the vol index down below okay i'm going to turn off these other things that you don't need to really watch other than it also triggered eri's tsi and signal so if we were to add the fifth the four kings are eri tsi signal and trend the fifth you know, five musketeers or whatever you want to, how do you remember them? But the, this <laughs> vol index is that fifth one because it's a, uh, it's a brilliant oscillator. I love it on the four hour and the smaller time frames as well, because it's not often that it gets down this low on a weekly time frame. So it's significant. We need to pay attention to that. And, and so let's look at this also, you guys, same thing happened, right? It came up to the 50 week moving average hit resistance and it went sideways for a few weeks. And then as that 21 week moving average started turning higher, that's when it broke through. Look at that. I think that's pretty cool. We just, uh, let me just do this real quick here. And um, uh, the, uh, I'm looking for the bars pattern here. So let's take this, bear with me. So we had this candle and went through there. Okay, kind of seeing the same thing play out potentially on a weekly basis. If that were the case, though, well, I mean, that took us almost to a new high and, and pushed up higher. Like, this is interesting to unpack this. I haven't seen this right now. Uh, so that took it up 250%. Um, the math doesn't work here. It's, it's not going to be the same. I mean, 250%. Well, it does actually. It takes us back to a new high. Wouldn't that be interesting? Um, guys, you can't rule anything out in crypto. Joe, did you have something? Um. I thought I heard you say something. I uh, was just, just watching the market uh, reaction. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see if we hold these gains up here. Right. That's why I was mentioning to you earlier. I'm looking at the daily close today to mm -hmm. see where, where it closes at today on the daily chart. Yeah. Um, you know, for that uh, final um, confirmation. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'll jump back over to that on in a minute. But, um, well, this is very interesting, you guys, and we'll unpack this a bit tomorrow. But, you know, this vol index, again, if we go back even farther to the uh, 2015 market bottom and it broke, the TSI broke up here, uh, it did have a little retest. Okay, so that's interesting, you know, because we, we've been saying that we could see, we've seen this push up. I'd say that was probably around 50% and 44%. And then what happened is it, it dumped, oops, uh, I didn't draw that right. Let me redo that. And it hit the 50 and rejected and came down 50% more. So that's kind of what my, I don't want to call it a fear, but let, let's call it the other op option is that we push up and reject at the 50 and have this kind of a secondary bounce 50% lower. Yeah. And that's what I identified and we look at in, in the active trader class. We've already been watching that. I call it my uh, bear dump um, scenario. So oh, really important. We watch this. So, so either we hold and break above the 50 there, or we kind of uh, power down and come back below it. Like we saw. So anyway, 
Anyway, so um, anyway, I think that's all we have time for here. Um, let's keep an eye on that. If um, if you are uh, new and uh, some people are watching and are not yet members, you can also you can access these indicators at cryptomastery.online or they're included in our M3 crypto program, which is at uh, moonstream.io. That redirects to M3. All right, guys. Well, uh, let's see. I think we covered everything. Uh, so keep an eye on the markets here. This interesting new scenario that we'll keep an eye on. But again, this 50-week moving average, very important. We see what happens there. Do we push on through or do we see a 50% pullback on this, which we have seen in the past? So that would put us down to right around that 12,000, uh, let's see, 50% pullback, right around 12,000 which if I, as I remember is the 300 weekly moving average, uh, as Joe was saying, we want to watch how this daily candle closes. And yeah, if it's, if it remains as bullish engulfing, then that looks, that's interesting right at the 21 day moving average, the, we'd want to see our indicators starting to turn up, uh, which we haven't, but we certainly could. And then that scenario that we put here could be playing out. Uh, so we'll have to see it and see what happens. We'll talk more about that tomorrow at noon. And uh, thanks for joining everybody. And uh, we will look forward to talking to you next week. See ya. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Good luck trading, everyone. Bye.